I came across a tool that's been trending all over social media. It's supposed to not only just twist your wires together very quickly, it's supposed to also strip the insulation off of them at the same time. So I went ahead and picked one up and that's this tool right here. We're gonna see if this tool actually works as well as the social media pages make them look and if it can actually save some time. So let's go ahead and jump right in, let's go. All right, so first thing for people that don't know what pre-twisting is or why it's done, pre-twisting is exactly how it sounds. It's pre-twisting the wires together before you put a wire nut on top. So really quickly, I'll show you the general demonstration of how that's done. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna strip the insulation off of my wires so that then I can twist them together so that all the copper is making contact with each other on each one of the wires that I have. So that's when I would then take my lineman pliers and I will just twist those wires all together, making sure that they form a nice tight bond with one another. Then once I've got all my wires twisted together, I can see they've made a nice connection. Then I just trim the top off of it. And then I put a wire nut in on top and so that is essentially pre-twisting when you're splicing wires together. All right, so what you saw right there is what some electricians in the comments said takes too long to do and they just refuse to do it. So now let's take this tool and see if it can speed it up. All right, so here is the tool up close and this can be used one of two ways. You can either connect it into a drill and it will spin it for you or it does come with some handles that are essentially bolts that thread in here and here that you can manually then twist the wires, but I can't imagine that's going to work nearly as well as using the drill. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert this into the drill. All right, so the way that this works is in this case, I've got three wires and you want to have the middle wire go straight up into the middle of the tool there. You see that hole there. And then the other two, one will go on this side of the tool and one will come out on this side of the tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert these wires into the tool as they are supposed to be. So as you can see, I've got one coming out the side over here, one wire coming out the side over here, and then one going straight up the middle of the tool itself. And you're supposed to use a pair of pliers to hold the wires so that while it's twisting, it's not just pulling the wires out of your hand and it can twist as efficiently as possible. So we've got them in place. Got it set up to twist clockwise, and let's see what it does. All right, so as you can see, it did strip the insulation off of the wires that are wrapping around what is the center wire that went up into the center of the tool. So now I'm going to take my pliers and hopefully be able to pull the insulation off of this center one here. I'm not sure that I really like the wires just wrapping around the center wire, although I can't really get it to move at all, so it doesn't really feel like it can just pull out of there. So at this point, obviously, we've got to shorten this down in order to get a wire nut on top of this. So what I've seen some people do is they will trim it down a little ways, and then they'll take that little bit that's still sticking up on top and take some pliers and basically just bend it down like so, so that then I guess it is impossible for that middle wire to be pulled out. However, what I don't like about this is when I go to put my wire nut on, this is way too big. I'd have to use, first of all, a massive wire nut. And even if I do get a wire nut in on top of this, it's not going to be connecting with any of the wiring that's underneath of this piece of metal that I basically flap down. It's just gonna make connections on this side and then on the center piece of wire that got folded down. I guess I'd be afraid that since it's not making a whole lot of contact that it would eventually just come off. So for me, if I was gonna use this, I would leave that piece of metal all the way up and I would actually trim this all the way down like so and then take my wire nut and put it in on top all right, so now this is on here nice and tight. It's not just gonna fall off. I'm not completely sure how repeatable this is, so I wanna try and do another test. All right, so the first time I used three wires, this time let's use two and see how well it works. And in this case, one of the wires will go into the center of the tool again, and then one will go out the side and there will be one side that doesn't have a wire coming out of it. All right, so again, I'm gonna make sure I've got one of those wires going straight up the middle and one is coming out the side here, and let's see how it does. Oh, 
Okay, I don't think that this did a very good job of stripping that wire off. As you can see, it should have started there, and all it looks like it did was basically ripped it a little and stretched it, and then this part up here did get stripped. So I wonder if I can just peel that insulation off of there. Okay, so with the insulation peeled off, as you can see, it did wrap it around it, but it doesn't seem to be quite as tight as with the three wires, but let's go ahead and take the insulation off of the center one. Again, it doesn't feel like that center one will just pull out, because it does look like at the base, it did at least for part of it twist around each other the way that you would want it to. So again, at this point, I would cut off the top. So I just, I don't really feel too good about these two wires put together. I personally would not trust this just because of, I can see that there is clearly a gap up underneath of here because it didn't wrap it real tight there. It did kind of at the base, but not up here on top. And I can kind of feel a little bit of play in the wire. So I wouldn't really trust this, but let's do another test and see how it does. All right, so I'm gonna give this another try with two wires and see what it does. Okay, so that's a problem. It just completely snapped the wire off. So if you've ever run wiring, you know that you want to leave enough in a box uh, to work on before you twist your wires together. But a lot of the times, you're not leaving a ton of extra to work with. So losing this much wire, if this is going to do this to some of the places that you're trying to connect wires together, you'd have to run all new wire to make sure that you had enough wire per code inside of the box itself. And if you look at that, it looks like it just got bunched up in there and it just snapped it right off. All right, so the three wires together seem to work all right. The two wires I don't think worked very well at all. So let's try four and see how it does with four. So in this case, one wire will go up in the middle of the tool. One of the sides will have one wire coming out of it and the other side will have two wires coming out of it. Like so, there's two on this side, one on this side and one going up the center. So let's see how it does with four wires. Okay, as you can see, it did strip the insulation off of the wires. It did wrap the wires around each other. But again, kind of like with the two wires, if you look at it really closely, up here at the top, it just doesn't look like they're wrapped around each other really well. To me, that's telling me that it's not evenly distributing the wires around each other. So I'll go ahead and trim this down. And so now that's what it would look like trimmed down so it's a little bit tighter. And now I'm gonna take my wire nut and try to put it on here. And it did seem to twist on and bite into the wiring. I can't just pull it off, but I still just don't really like the way that it felt. And something else, I showed this to an electrician friend of mine, and he's curious also with the amount of torque that the tool puts on the wiring, if it could possibly even change the gauge of the wiring. All right, so nowhere in these terrible instructions, which yes, it's in Chinese, but it's also in English, does it dictate which way the tool is supposed to spin? I've been spinning it clockwise, and there's a reason why I'm doing that. But in looking closer at this tool, I'm wondering if it's spinning counterclockwise wouldn't make this tool work better. But even if that does work better, I'll explain in a little bit why that would be counterproductive. All right, so I'm gonna insert my three wires like I have been the entire time. And now let's see if putting the drill in reverse or making it go counterclockwise makes this work better. And sure enough, going counterclockwise, it made this a whole lot tighter. It cut it a lot cleaner. This is by far the best twisting job that it's done out of all the tests. And while it didn't strip all the insulation off down here at the bottom, all of this is connected together really well. If I go ahead and cut this down, so as we discussed, this is all being twisted counterclockwise. So then when I go to put my wire nut on, what direction does it go? It goes clockwise. So the problem with this and using the wire nut is that as I turn this wire nut on and if it gets installed correctly, where I have some nice twisting down here below the wire nut, it's actually gonna be counterproductive to what the wire stripper and twister did. It's actually gonna be promoting these wires to get looser because now we're twisting it in the opposite direction 
due to the direction that the wire nut has to be twisted on. All right, so I've got my wire nut all the way on. Now let's spin it off and see what it did to the wire. As you can see, it is no longer nearly as tight as it was before. And now we run the risk of one of these wires falling out or eventually coming apart over time or just not having a good connection overall. So while this does twist and strip wires very quickly, I just am never going to use this. I don't think it does either of those things really, really well. And the best that it did it was on the last example where we went counterclockwise and you saw the issue with that. So if you all have seen this trending on social media or even on this platform, now you have a completely unbiased review and examples of how this actually works, or in my opinion, does not work. So if I didn't make myself completely clear as what I'm gonna use this for, I'm gonna use it for absolutely nothing. Also, you can click this link right here that'll take you to the video that I referenced in the beginning showing how to connect wires together properly. So I hope that you found this to be helpful. And if you did, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section as well. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.